we are here once again, and um, this is just exciting. Um, so today, obviously, we have two pieces that we want to talk about. Um, the sweet spot between doing and being, and um, Jacob Needleman's time and the soul. Um, so they're obviously related, and we'll just um, let our conversation unfold in present time. Um, so why don't we just get started with, let's get started with, um, with our first little article. Um, there was a, a wonderful image that I got from it where, um, I'll just read this one sentence that stood out to me. As a culture, we give more importance to creating notes and relatively little to the space between them. That's on the third uh, paragraph. What does that mean to you guys? We give more importance to creating notes or progress and relatively little importance to the space, the silence, the beings. What do you guys make of that? The very first thing to me that comes to mind is because of my artist background. Um, when people create, they have this need to fill in empty space. It's like, well, it's empty. I need to put something there. Mm. When in reality, the space itself is powerful and can be artistic when used properly. You don't have to put everything there. And then when you put everything in and you fill in every little space, it, it's too much. It's crowded. It's overpopulated. And it no longer looks artistic. Now it just looks messy. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it makes me think about how people are always, um, they're very focused on always doing something and always doing always having to be doing something when and they don't focus enough on the time where they sit and just let their mind think you know mm -hmm. it's like you don't always have to be constantly focused on what you're going to do next because that's not being present and if sometimes if you were a little more present you would think i need to sit and just be mm -hmm. instead of constantly doing and that goes back to the doing and doing and being is sometimes people do 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 and they're not doing enough just sit and be mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so. oh, beautiful. I don't know if I'm jumping already to time and soul <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I can't help but to say this um, he says he says um, in the intro he says this sense that time is passing more and more quickly is, of course, a common human experience. Mm -hmm. And basically he goes on to say that it's, it's starting to like, consume us, and it's so frightening for us to be consumed with like, us losing, losing time. And I think that's the reason why they go so perfectly hand in hand, because we don't just sit and be. We're missing the being, <coughs> just sitting. So when I think about you know, like the empty spaces, um, like you said, you know, we're always trying to fill that gap, but why? You know, I think that mm -hmm. we're wired to believe that that's what we're supposed to do, you know? Like, we're not supposed to be, just be. Mm -hmm. That's not, you know, being successful, that's not being proactive. Yet, we have to, we have to sit and be if we're going to be able to progress. Mm -hmm. You know, like, um, I think it says in here, um, when one foot walks, the other rests. So it's like we have to have both. We can't just constantly be mm -hmm. on this train, mm -hmm. killing ourselves. And does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think the notes are to be heard, and there has to be a silence in between each of those notes mm -hmm. to you for you to hear mm -hmm. what's actually going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the space could be the the space of well, I just thought of something. What do I really think about that thought? Or I have a problem. What do I really think about this problem? Take the time to think instead of and just jumping. Instead of just jumping, right? Mm -hmm. Well, when you take that into our everyday lives, how many mistakes do we make because we immediately act? You know, we don't take a second to think. You mm -hmm. know, okay, how is this going to make me feel? How is it going to affect me in my daily life? How will this affect the people around me? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I just naturally jump to a conclusion and take an action. Well, because especially, we feel that natural need to do so. Right. Yeah, especially when we feel like big things happen in our life. We feel like we have to do take response and take action immediately. Mm -hmm. When I have, I can personally say that I have learned that sometimes 
waiting and just sitting and honestly just being and thinking about what do I want to, where do I want to go from here? Mm -hmm. And honestly, I've learned that the silence it has the possibility, it has the chance to change your life. It brings more clarity. Yeah, I mean because when things happen or when you're, say when you're angry, you're angry with someone and all you want to do is pick up the phone and call them and tell them how you feel about them. When in actuality, anger doesn't get you anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, conversation and understanding does. So if you're angry, wait. Wait until you can think about, why am I angry? Mm -hmm. What do I want to say to this person? You know, and, and honestly, you get so much further with that. But I feel like so many people are caught up, and that goes with anything, you know, any any great decision in your life, you know, whether it's a job or a move or anything. It's it's sometimes you have to stop and think about just the consequences, the effects, and sometimes that's that has the possible that it, those silences, the silences in our life, if we take the chance to take them, can change our life. Mm -hmm. There's um something that you, you said in there. Um, there's a time to move and there's a time to stay. Yes. Oh, that's a song. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that? yeah. <laughs> that's very, very important. You know, like, there is a time to be proactive. There's a time to just sit and be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like you're saying, there's so much clarity that happens. And if we're always moving, what Needleman says, you know, rounds about is, uh, uh, where was I? Mm -hmm. You know, so you're wind up all this time later, completely missing the experience. Because you can only experience when you're present. Right. You know, so if you're not present in what's actually happening, mm -hmm. it's like, you've, you've done all this proactive and you got everything you wanted, but you completely missed the mark. Mm -hmm. You missed the whole journey. So what was actually the point? Like, And you end up feeling like you not, didn't have enough time. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All this meaningful time that we have has disappeared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's funny because I think, I can sit here and think of many times where I've acted and done things quickly without really stopping and thinking about it. And then someone will give me a different perspective. And my first thought is, oh, well, I didn't think about that. Mm -hmm. Reality was I didn't stop and think about it. <laughs> I didn't right. consider the options right. or question myself before someone else questioned me. Right. All right, so you guys are bringing up, and I'd love to hear your thoughts, Alex. You, you guys are bringing up um, the difference between reaction, which is reaction to external circumstance, well, we're not really in control. It's just a knee-jerk reaction. Um, the difference between reaction and response. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like being able to respond. And responding comes from an inner place where we're actually sitting with the, whatever we're sitting with, letting the answer come in the silence because the answers are always in the spaces. Right. And I feel like, too, sometimes we look for answers um, you know, in big, in big moments in our life, we look for answers in other people, right. and we look for answers, I mean, I know us girls do this, we look for answers in songs, and we look for answers in, <laughs> in emotional videos, like, in yeah. emotional movies, <laughs> and we call our girlfriends, and like, hey, you know, I have this problem, and we, we sincerely expect them to tell us mm -hmm. where to go from here, and I've just recently learned that nobody can tell you what to do because in your heart you already know what is in your best interest mm -hmm. you just you just feel like you have to have somebody reinforce it and if they tell you something different you're just going to call your next girlfriend mm -hmm. right. you know what i'm saying so and so space. yeah mm -hmm. and so that's why you need the space because you don't need anybody's confirmation all you need is for you to follow your heart and I feel like you can't follow your heart if you're so if everybody else's voices are turned up so loud that you can't hear your own mm -hmm. and when you're in the silence that's when you hear your own this yes. is one of my favorite quotes in here everything that can be counted doesn't necessarily count mm -hmm. everything that counts cannot necessarily be counted yes. so it's like that empty space that we have like that that time that that moment that necessarily doesn't count as far as us being proactive and getting what we want. Right. But it does in the sense that it's necessary. 